I was born and raised in Conrad, Montana on my family's ranch. I'm a fourth generation Montanan with deep agricultural roots on both sides of my family. I have cousins and aunts and uncles who ranch all across Montana. My brother still ranches up in Glacier County, Pondere County, and Teton County. Okay. And as far as uh, uh, education, where did you go to college at? I graduated from Conrad High School. I'm a Conrad cowgirl. Mm -hmm. I went to undergraduate at the University of Montana with a degree in languages. I worked in Georgia and went to law school in Georgia, worked in Georgia and Oklahoma, and returned to my home state of Montana in 1988. Okay. And uh, family-wise, I know you're married to John, and uh, how many kids and uh, grandkids I, I've seen mm -hmm. from Columbia? Uh, John, my husband of 36 years, we have three children. We have a diverse family. We have a bobcat engineer, we have a grizzly music teacher, and we have an ore digger engineer. And I have two young grandchildren who live in Dutton, Montana. Okay. And uh, as far as your uh, professional life, you're, you're an attorney. Uh, tell me about your, your life as an attorney, uh, which you started in, in Georgia, you said. I've been an attorney for 38 years. I represent farmers, ranchers, small businesses. I help them navigate the legal issues that they face on a daily business. And it's given me great insight to see where the friction is when small business owners, agricultural operators are working with government, where processes need to be improved, where they need to be streamlined. I do not have a military background, but my husband, John, served in the United States Air Force. Okay. And uh, as far as uh, politically, I know that you ran for the uh, Montana Supreme Court. Uh, any other political uh, uh, campaign experience or anything? No, I ran for the Supreme Court four years ago. I, that was my first political campaign, but I come from a family who taught us it's important to give back to the community. So I've had a great-grandfather, grandfather, father, aunts and uncles serve in the legislature. My parents both served on the school board. So we were brought up to, to give back to the community in our household. Okay. Um, when uh, Congressman Gianforte uh, called you and offered you to, to be on the ticket, or, or what, what went through your mind? What was your, uh, what was your reaction? I was excited to get the call for Greg. I was excited to get the call from Greg. Greg has had a positive impact in my life. With his business experience and leadership, he knows how to create jobs. My youngest son, when he graduated in 2012 from Montana Tech, he could not find a job in Montana as an electrical engineer, nor could any of his Montana classmates. We exported all of those young Montana students out of state. Well, just last year, my youngest son was able to come back. He was offered a job in Bozeman due to the growth in the high tech industry that was generated in large part by Greg and Susan Gianforte and their Right Now's Technology Company. So we are very interested in creating jobs and opportunities. We want to stop exporting our young students, let them live here and work here. And that's not just in high tech, it's in mining and logging and manufacturing facilities and of course our number one egg, our number one industry agriculture. Okay. Uh, Kristen, what would you say that you bring to the to the table to the Republican ticket for Greg and I will be a great pair. Greg brings his technology and business experience. I bring my deep agricultural roots and my legal experience and I am not just going to be a candidate, a lieutenant governor that cuts ribbons. I'm going to go to work cutting the red tape. We will be doing a top to bottom agency review, identifying outdated, unnecessary, redundant regulations, and improving the service that the governments give to the people, streamlining processes, bringing a culture of service back to our government agencies. Okay. And what would you say separates you not only from Casey Schreiner, the Democratic Lieutenant Governor candidate, but, but from Mike Cooney, from the Cooney Schreiner ticket. Uh, and, and maybe what separates you personally, I guess, and maybe you could hear you and your running mate, Greg Gianforte, what, what's the difference between you guys? Greg Gianforte and I bring practical business, agriculture, and leadership experience, job creating experience to the governor's office. 
We are not career bureaucrats. We know how to create jobs. We are focused on customer service in government agencies and bringing innovation, clarity of vision to the agencies, holding people accountable. And as I said, bringing service to the people. Okay. Um, as you travel around the state for campaign events and stuff, uh, what would you say is most on the minds of the Montanans that, uh, that you talk to? What we've experienced, of course, this, the COVID has turned things upside down in Montana and, and we hear stories from all around the state but people are ready to go back to work. We have had some serious economic fallout because of what has happened with the pandemic and they wanna go back to work. They need help in getting the economy going again. So economy is one of the things that's on their minds as well as keeping our population safe as we go through this virus. We're hopeful that there'll be vaccines available by the end of the year and we are ready to get Montana back to work to open up the economy, to create jobs, and get back to normal. Okay, um, and I wanted to ask you about some of the uh, some of the other issues that, that you hear about on the campaign trail. I mean, uh, sales tax. We've heard that uh, both. What, what are your feelings on a sales tax? Because we've heard from the uh, Cooney campaign that Greg Gianforte supported the sales tax, but that's he's, he's since said you know that was many many years ago, and he's changed his. Uh, feelings on that. So what are your thoughts on sales tax? Greg Gianforte and I are opposed to a sales tax, period. It's interesting that Mike Cooney would state that Greg is in support of a sales tax when in 2005 it was Mike Cooney who drafted and created a bill to introduce a statewide sales tax. He also voted in 2005 and 2007 to create local sales taxes. Mike Cooney is the one who has supported sales taxes, not Greg Gianforte. They will not be a sales tax while Greg Gianforte is governor. Okay. And how about public lands? That's another hot topic uh, that, uh, that we hear about a lot. Uh, what are your uh, stances on, on public land? Both Greg and I have raised our families on Montana's public lands. Nobody appreciates more than us the value of our public lands, the importance of keeping public lands in public hands, in creating more access to our public lands. Those are all goals of our Montana Comeback Plan, which is available at montanabusinessplan.com and you can read about it. But we are strong advocates for public land and Greg's record stands behind that as a congressman. Okay, and uh, with the uh, COVID-19 in Montana, how do you, how do you feel about the the response that the state has uh, gone through here, and what, I mean, if this ever happens again, what what might, are there some things that you as Lieutenant Governor and Greg Gianforte as Governor would do to, to change things? Well, these have been unprecedented times, and Greg isn't gonna second guess, nor am I, the actions that have been taken to date. But if Greg is elected Governor, First, we need to protect those who are most vulnerable, our senior citizens, those who have compromised immune systems. But Greg will rely primarily on personal responsibility. He will make recommendations based on the input from science and other stakeholders, and he will allow the people to do what they choose to be best for them to protect themselves. There will not be statewide mandates. I um, also want to talk about education uh, in Montana, both uh, K through 12 and then secondary education. What are your, what are your thoughts on that, uh, how Montana is doing and what you might be able to do to improve that? I am a product of the Montana public education system and Greg and I are strong advocates for public education in Montana. In our smaller communities, the public schools are essential as well as in our larger communities. We want to see more dollars going to the teachers and less money going to administration. So we'll be taking a look at that. We would like to see more uh, at trade education, apprenticeships, including in high school as well as in college and post-secondary education. Greg has spent more time in the field of education 
than any other area outside of his business experience. He's studied this, he's interested in it, and we are both strong advocates of public education. Okay. And then uh, as far as healthcare goes, uh, that's always on the minds of Montanans as well. Uh, what can you do to improve healthcare? Where does it need to be, need to be improved, if, if it's improved? <clears throat> As a congressman, Greg has introduced and several bills that improve delivery of health care in Montana, including telemedicine. We are both very concerned about keeping health care in our rural communities. It is essential and providing ways such as telemedicine to accomplish that. We need to provide a safety net for those who are most vulnerable but we also need to make sure that the system doesn't implode and fall on itself so that uh, people who can, can pay uh, will pay their share of the cost, but providing it to those who do not otherwise have access to health insurance. Uh, pricing transparency is another concern, as well as we need to get our hands around this meth epidemic that has been hitting our state. Both Greg and I believe that the answer for nonviolent offenders is rehabilitation rather than incarceration, to allow them the opportunity to get well, to provide them with jobs as they're working through rehabilitation. The cost of rehabilitation and our drug treatment programs is a fraction of the cost of incarceration. So drug treatment courts are not in every county. We would be working with the legislature to expand drug, drug courts and make them available throughout Montana. Okay. And then finally, uh, I know that you mentioned that uh, agriculture has played a big role in your life. Uh, you're, you're, uh, you got some expertise in that from the uh, law uh, uh, standpoint. Uh, talk about uh, what you can do for Montana farmers and ranchers. Agriculture is our number one industry. And there are several different ways that we can come and improve agriculture, value added agriculture. I'm gonna give a little shout out to a hometown business in my hometown of Conrad, Windrift Hill. They have provided a value added product, lotions and soaps made from goat milk that they, they now ship around the country and it can be applied to all agricultural products. We have the best brand for our beef and agricultural products of any state in the nation. People will pay premiums for the Montana brand. We need to keep and market better that Montana brand throughout the supply chain. So we, have, we will be working with agricultural groups to bring more processing facilities into Montana, bring trades, butcher schools into Montana. There's many ideas that can improve the outlook for agriculture in Montana. I'm excited to be on the ticket with Greg Gianforte. He will bring leadership experience, business experience to the governor's office. He will be selecting people to serve in the agencies based upon their qualifications. He knows how to build teams. He knows how to communicate a clear vision. He knows how to hold people accountable and he knows how to celebrate success. He will be a wonderful governor for the state of Montana.